And now, pickup lines. Are you an Aztec priest? Cause you have my heart. Call me an Awizot, cause I want you for your body. Who needs Tonatia when I've already got you lighting up my day? Much like the Nahual, I can be anything you want me to be. All the step pyramids in the world couldn't reach the pedestal I've put you on. So, you like Aztec architecture, huh? Why don't you take a look at the rock-hard serpent between my legs? Hey, you know why Thor's enemies are unconscious? Cause they all got hammered. So here's a mythical creature who's got a really bad touch, the Yaramiyahu from Australian mythology. It's a child-sized creature, yay! With red skin, no hair, and little suction cups on its fingers and toes, kind of like a starfish. And what are those suction cups for? Well, in Australia, if a person ever decides to take a little break underneath a tree, there's a chance this creature may jump down out of the tree and stick its fingers and toes onto the person, which then suck their blood out of their body, but only enough to incapacitate them instead of killing them, so the Yaramiyahu can then open its mouth like a snake and swallow the person while they're still alive. Because of this, Australians typically try to avoid taking breaks under trees. Yeah, good call. However, there is a way to escape. Sometimes this creature pukes people up in order to take a nap and you have an opportunity to get away. But if this happens to you multiple times, you'll start turning into a Yarami Yahoo. Personally, I think I'd move out of town after the first time. I mean, how cheap is the rent that you'd still stick around after an experience like that? Yo mama's so ugly, Izanagi went back to Izanami. Yo mama's so dumb, she keeps trying to throw pokeballs at the yokai. Yo mama's so gross, she made the Akaname throw up. Yo mama's so fat, when she heard Momotaro used to be a peach, she ate him. Yo mama's so ugly, Oiwasan died a second time. Yo mama's so annoying, the oni who kidnapped her gave her right back. Yo mama's so dumb, when she saw the nine-tailed fox, she thought someone must have shoved eight other foxes up its butthole. I have a question about Apollo from Greek mythology. Okay, so you know how in Greek mythology the sun and the moon are pulled by chariots? Originally it was Helios and Selene who pulled them, but eventually they retired and Apollo and Artemis took over that duty. So Apollo pulls the sun across the sky every day. However, there are a couple of occasions in Greek mythology where Apollo has really pissed off Zeus to the point where Zeus has taken his powers away and forced Apollo to live as human for extended periods of time. Who was pulling the sun chariot during those times? Apollo couldn't have possibly been doing it. I wonder if people were complaining to Zeus, like, Zeus, we still need the sun across the sky, and Zeus is like, no, I stand by my decision. Did Helios start doing it again? That must have been an awkward conversation. Zeus going to him, Helios, I need you to come out of retirement for a while. Why? Because my sun is grounded. Again? <laughs> Maybe. Hey. You know why the other Chinese gods never hang out with Ao Guang? He has a habit of dragging the mood down. Here's something you might not know about Hestia. A lot of people know that Hestia is a virgin goddess who never got married or fell in love with anybody in any way. But some of you may be wondering, wait a minute, Aphrodite would never allow that. That woman is crazy and constantly forces people into relationships whether they want it or not. Well, see, the thing is, Aphrodite has no power over Hestia's love life in any way. And the reason for this is because when gods first started trying to get her to marry them, Hestia was so determined to stay out of Olympian drama she went right to Zeus, and Zeus bestowed her with the right and power to remain a virgin goddess forever. Hold up, since when does Zeus do nice things like that for a woman? You think he'd be one of the first people trying to hop on her? You know what I think? I think Hestia's got some dirt on her brother. And given the things that are publicly known about Zeus, I can't imagine what he'd want to keep buried. Right over there, we have an eastern dragon. Wow, that is lovely. Indeed. And right over here, we have a western dragon. Yeah! What? Howdy there, partner! Mind telling me what in tarnation's going on with all the varmints we got up in these parts? Okay, no, that is not how western dragons really are. You don't know that? How many western dragons have you met? Hmm? Yeah, that's what I thought.
Yo, Heracles, I heard you brought someone back from the dead? I sure did. So you know my buddy, King Admetus? Well, his wife tragically died before her time, and I wasn't happy about that. So I went down to the underworld, I told Hades about it, and we came to an understanding that she deserved to live out the rest of her life. So I took her back. So he just let you have her? He never does that. I know. I'm guessing he was just in a good mood that day or something. I wouldn't expect that to happen again in a million years. Wow. <laughs> Hold on. Didn't your wife and your children also die tragically before their time? Why didn't you try to get them back? Son of a bitch! Fun fact! It's pretty well known at this point that Tom Hiddleston was originally actually supposed to play Thor in the Marvel movies, but do you know who they originally wanted for Loki? Well, the answer is actually Mr. Nicholas Cage. Yeah, and apparently he was such a huge Loki fan, he actually showed up to the audition in full Loki cosplay. They were seriously considering him for the role, if not for the fact that he was very insistent they be as mythically accurate as possible, even wanting some kind of reference to that sexual horse story. Disney was not about that, so they went with Hiddleston instead. Cage got pretty mad. He ended up ripping off his flesh mask to reveal that he was the actual Loki from Norse myth, and he challenged Tom Hiddleston, to which he ripped off his flesh mask, revealing himself to be former President Theodore Roosevelt. The two then started firing lasers and nerf darts at one another. Disney, however, chose not to take a side as they were too busy with their plans to purchase Facebook and turn it into a Donald Duck dating simulator. Wisdom with Mimir. Teachers and professors who brag that their class is too hard for most students to pass are idiots. It is literally your entire job to educate students to the point that they can pass your class. So if most students keep failing it, that means you suck at your job, which isn't something to brag about. Hey, you know why Kumbakarna had trouble telling the gods what he wanted? Because it was a bit of a tongue twister. Here's something you might not know about Set. The Egyptian god obviously had the power to turn into several different animals, but when he was finally defeated by his nephew Horus, he took the form of a pig and ran off. Because of this, Egyptians looked at every pig with a hint of suspicion, wondering if perhaps that is the same pig Set turned into. Because I... Guess they don't think he ever turned back. Pigs were also completely left out of religious ceremonies and considered unworthy to be sacrificed. And I'm not sure why, because if you sacrifice a pig to the gods and then it turns out to be the former god of evil, I think the gods would love that. Man, one evil god turns into a pig and now we're going to sideline the entire pig race as a result? That is bigotry. Or I guess you could say, pigotry. I have a question about Ragnarok. So, you know, when the actual battle of Ragnarok is supposed to happen, what's going to happen is the forces of good, including the Asgardians, the Einherjar, and their allies, are going to leave Asgard and go meet the forces of evil at a battlefield called Vigrider. And then they're all going to duke it out, and everyone's going to die except for basically Thor's two sons. And they know this. But what happens if the forces of good don't show up at Vigrider? What if they just stay at Asgard, where it's much more heavily guarded and they probably have more of an advantage? Would that be considered rude? Like, are they already on the schedule? Do they get written up if they don't show up for that? I wonder what the forces of evil would do, how long they would wait at Figreter. Like, my god, they're supposed to be here an hour ago. Horus, you remember that time we were fighting and we started shooting our semen at each other? <laughs> We agreed to never speak of that again! Well, we're going to have to because... I'm pregnant! <laughs> huh? It's true, Horace. I got the test results this morning. But, but you're... you're a guy! A guy who is now pregnant with the child of his greatest enemy! <laughs> slash nephew! <laughs> oh... <sighs> All right, well, is it a boy or a girl? It is a sun disc. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know. Our mythology is really weird. So here's a mythical creature who's a bit of a night owl 
The Tatakala from Native American mythology. It's a giant evil owl witch, well that's new, and it enjoys eating just about anything people won't eat. Frogs, lizards, snakes, people. Its favorite food is little kids. Yeah, that's not new. These creatures often mimic human voices in order to lure children to their dwelling, and only one child is known to have escaped from them. And shortly after that kid escaped, these creatures were wiped out because their cave simply exploded. And no one is quite sure why. I guess God just got tired of their shit. However, there is also a legend that one of these creatures died by drowning, and from her eye sprang forth all of the owls of the world. Yes, science! Now remember, son, before you make decisions in life, you should always ask yourself, what would Jesus do? You mean the guy who got crucified? Well, yeah. You really want me to live the same kind of life he did? Son, don't disrespect Jesus! Hey, I'm not trying to disrespect him, I just think Jesus and I have very different end goals. See, I prefer the term, what would Bill Gates do? Ha <laughs> ha! I have used my evil powers to lead you astray into these woods! Now you shall never return home! You will remain here forever and go insane for my amusement! I don't think so! <laughs> what are you doing? No, 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 stop! Stop! No! No, my powers are useless against you! Curses! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, this is a thing. Here's something you might not know about Sun Wukong. Obviously, the Monkey King is immortal, but do you know how he gained his immortality? Well, there's actually several answers to that. He originally trained with a Taoist master who taught him the secrets of immortality. Thus, he became immortal. And later on, he traveled into the underworld and removed his name from the Book of Mortals, thus becoming immortal. Again. Later, he was tasked with guarding the peaches of immortality, but instead he ate them and became immortal again. Then he crashed a god party, drank their heavenly wine, and became immortal again. Then he stumbled into an alchemy lab where he found pills of immortality, ate them, and became immortal again. So then the gods got sick of him and threw him in a furnace, but his immortality kept him alive, so the furnace burned away his mortality, which made him immortal again. And finally, he found some magical ginseng fruit, which... Oh, you know what it did. Bro, you already became immortal. You don't need to do it six more times. Some people are never satisfied. Hey, do you think the two goddesses, Nyx and Hamera, have anything in common? Nah, it's night and day.